Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 6, Lesson 5, Create Additional Weapons and Loot. In the last lesson, we created our loot data table, and we also set up a couple different loot classes for a missile launcher and a laser cannon. But at the moment, these don't actually do anything. So in this lesson, we're going to set up the functionality for collecting this loot, which means that we're going to need to set up a way to spawn additional weapons on our player. So there's a lot to pack into this lesson, and I even considered making it two different lessons, but I wanted the message to be coherent throughout. So the objectives for this lesson are to create a laser cannon class, we'll then create a laser cannon pickup, and we'll set it up so that when the player collects that pickup, it adds an additional weapon to their weapon array. Once that's set up, we're gonna create a rocket launcher class, which will be another type of weapon the player can collect, and then we'll get the rocket launcher pickup set up for that. And for this, I've created a few models. Now, none of these are especially good, but they're at least some models that you can use if you don't wanna purchase them elsewhere. So this is what our rocket launcher is gonna look like, and this is what the laser cannon is gonna look like. And then our rocket launcher is actually going to launch this rocket. So I created a model for that as well. Now, again, you don't have to use these, but they will be available as a free download for you. If you just want something to get you started, there are various asset packs that you could use instead for this, but I don't want to make it so that you have to buy something. So I created these just for free use. And we are gonna need two different weapon classes for this. We're gonna need our laser cannon and our missile launcher. What I'm actually going to do is just right click on our weapon base and I'm gonna create a child and this is going to be called BP laser cannon. And as far as the functionality of this weapon goes, I want it to act exactly the same as the laser cannon that we've already created. The only difference is I'm actually going to swap out the mesh for the laser cannon mesh. And we can see here that this needs to be rotated and maybe scaled down slightly. And for the muzzle, I wanna make sure that it is in the correct orientation for this weapon. So I'll just move it forward slightly and I'll just change the material. So it's the silvery one that I made for weapons. And now that should be all set up. And here in my loot base, when we overlap with this sphere actor. Currently we're getting the player ship and then we're just doing a print string. I actually want to delete this. I want to create a new function called collect loot. And I want to drag that here and collect loot. I want to have an input of player ship. And here we'll just pass this in after we cast to it. And just for clarity, because we have a laser cannon, which is going to be a, a weapon class and a laser cannon, which is a loot class. I just want to change this to laser cannon pickup. And for the static mesh, I'll change it to my laser cannon. And we have this collect loot here on our loot base class. For each loot, we want it to do something a little bit different. So I can actually go to my functions here in my laser cannon pickup, and there's a thing that isn't visible until you hover over, and it'll say override. And I can select this, and then find collect loot, and you can see that this function comes from target loot base. And if we click that, we can actually create an override of this function. When we pick up this laser cannon, what do we want to happen? We want it to add an additional weapon to the player's weapon array. So for this, we're gonna to to set up this functionality first. So let's go back to our player ship and I'm gonna create a new variable. It's gonna be called weapon array. And the variable type for this is going to be weapon base. And this will be a class reference. And I want the player to always start with one weapon. So I'm gonna select weapon base, and this will mean that the player starts with one weapon equipped. And in a previous lesson, we created this spawn weapons function, and we're gonna add on to this. So let's go ahead and take our weapon array and let's actually make it an array. 
and I'm going to get my weapon array and set up a for each loop. And what this will do is it will cycle through each weapon in the weapon array, and then we'll go ahead and spawn it. Now currently we only have one weapon in there. So when I hit play, it should spawn the weapon exactly like we expect to. But as we gather loot, we want to add to this weapon array. And this is where things are going to start to get a little bit complex. So I'll try to go through this methodically and explain things well. But if there's any confusion, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to clarify things for you and maybe make a future update to this lesson. And the first thing I want to consider is that as we get additional weapons in this weapon array, we don't want them to spawn on top of each other. We'd like them to spread out a little bit to take up more space on the screen. And for this, we're actually going to need to create a spawn transform that calculates a different distance away from the player for each additional weapon that's spawned. And we want to do this twice, once for the left weapon array and once for the right weapon array. So I'm going to start by pulling off my spawn transform and typing make and we'll get make transform and we'll add some additional functionality to this but so that we don't have to write all this twice i'm going to start by just making this into a function and i'm going to call this get weapon spawn location and this can be a pure function and we can actually use this array index as a way to affect the location of each of these weapons so let's start by creating an input and we're just going to call this index and this can be an integer and we want to be able to use this twice so we want to pass in left or right weapon array and we can see that this is a component object so we can actually create a scene component and call this target and that will allow us to pass in our left weapon array and for the index, we want to pass in the index, but we want there to be a difference between the left and right index. So I'm going to copy this for my right weapon array. And I want to pass in this index to both of these. For the right weapon array, it's going to be just the index. But for the left weapon array, we're actually going to need to reverse it. So we can multiply it by minus one. So now that we have these two inputs of the index and the target, we're actually going to start setting up this get weapon spawn location function. And you may be a little bit confused at this point, but I promise you, if you bear with me, it's all going to come together by the end of this lesson. Let's start by taking this target input and saying get world transform. And I want to break this so I can get access to location, rotation, and scale. And the only thing we're going to be impacting for this function is the location. So rotation and scale can stay the same. For the location though, we want to adjust it based upon this index. So let's start by saying get right vector. And we're going to get this of our target. Then we'll take our index and we're going to multiply it by some number. And this number that we multiply it by is going to be the offset or the spacing of each of our weapons. And we may want this to be an adjustable number. So I'm actually going to create this as a local variable called offset. And you can play around with this number. I'm just going to start with something like 100. And we'll see how this looks and we may need to change it. Now we want to take this right vector and we want to multiply it by the offset. So we'll change this pin to an integer. And then if we add that value to our current location, we can get a new location that is 100 units to the left or to the right, depending upon the index. So let me just run through this again really quickly, just to make sure that you absorb what's happening in this get weapon spawn location function. We're taking two inputs, the index, which is the index of our weapon array, which has been either passed in directly in the case for the right weapon array or multiplied by minus one to reverse it for our left weapon array. We're going to take that index 
and we're gonna multiply it by an offset. And this will give us a distance to the left or to the right of the starting weapon position. One benefit of doing it this way is that for the first weapon in our array, the index is gonna be zero. So the input to this function for that first weapon is going to be zero, which means we're gonna multiply the offset by zero and get zero, which means when we multiply our right vector by zero, we'll get zero again, which means we pass nothing in here. So for our first weapon in our array, the location will be the same location as the left or right weapon array. And we can see that by pressing play and seeing that our weapons are in the same location they've always been. But as we add additional weapons to this array, that offset will be applied. And we're gonna call this spawn weapons function every time we pick up a new weapon. But what that means is that there may be weapons that have already been spawned. And that's because we have our active weapons. So what we actually wanna do is when we call this spawn weapons function, we'd like to clear our active weapons array and then start over from scratch. So let's start by doing a for each loop here. And we'll take our active weapons and we're going to destroy them. Then we'll take this active weapons array and clear it. And then we'll start to spawn the weapons from our weapon array. And I'm just gonna create one additional function on my player ship. And this is gonna be called add weapon to array. And for my weapon array, I wanna add a new weapon and I wanna pass this in as an input variable. And we're starting to get close to where this will work. So let's go back to our laser cannon pickup. We're gonna need a class of weapon to spawn for this loot. So let's add a new variable and it's gonna be called weapon class. And this will be of type weapon base. And in our collect loot, we already have a reference to our player. So we can say add weapon to array and pass this in. And for this, we'll choose laser cannon. And then again on our player, we'll say spawn weapons. So what this means is when we collect our laser cannon pickup and we call the collect loot function, it's going to add a weapon to our player's weapon array. And then it's gonna spawn weapons based upon all the weapons in that array. And we can see that when we collect this, it's gonna add new weapons to that weapon array, but it's not working exactly as we want it to yet. So let's fix a couple of these bugs. The first bug is that we were spawning the correct weapon on the left array, but not the right one. And this is because we just need to get a reference to this weapon and pass it into our right array. The next thing I noticed is that when we select, when we pick up the weapon, it's not removing it from the level. And we can just fix this by in our collect loot function, just saying destroy actor. And now we can see it's working as intended. There's one other thing though, and that's in our laser cannon pickup. We want the collision disabled on the laser cannon itself. And now it should be working the way we want it to. There we go. And we can see that we've spawned those additional weapons and they're firing correctly. But we want the weapons to be a little bit more diverse than that. So I'd like to set up an additional weapon type for a rocket launcher. And the rocket launcher, I want to work a little bit differently. I want it to fire rockets that can track the enemies instead of just firing lasers in a directly straight line. So here in my weapon base, I wanna create a new child of this and we're gonna call this rocket launcher. And I'll start by changing the mesh out with our missile launcher mesh. And for this rocket launcher, we want it to work a little bit differently. First of all, we don't want it to fire as often. So in our class defaults, we can change the fire rate down to something like one. 
and that way it only spawns one missile every second. And we also want to change the projectile to spawn a missile, which will act differently than the lasers. So here we can see that we have a projectile class, which is set up currently as BP projectile base. Let's create a new child of this called rocket. And then in our rocket launcher, we could change the projectile class to rocket. And I want my rocket to be a little bit different. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a static mesh. And this is going to be that missile that we had. And I don't want this laser beam. What I'd like instead is something that looks like a little burst of flame that's coming out of the back of the rocket. So I'm just gonna create a new Niagara system. And we'll use a fountain. And all we really need to do is just change the velocity on the X axis instead of the Z. And it will look like this is coming out of the back of the rocket. I'm just gonna make a few other quick changes. Spawn rate, I'm gonna put down to 50. And I wanna turn off the gravity so that they just go straight out from the back of the rocket. And one last thing is I just wanna change the lifetime of it from 0.5 to one. And that way they don't stay around as long. And we can also set the color to something like an orangish color that looks a little bit more like rocket fuel being burned. I'm not gonna spend too long on this. If you wanna spend a little bit longer and make it look better, feel free. But this is just basically what I'm gonna do for mine. And now we can see there that our rocket looks like it's just firing out some rocket fuel and I wanna turn off the collision on the rocket itself so that we're just using the collider here, but I'm also going to move that towards the front and that way it looks like when the missile collides with something, that will set off this damage function. Now, in order to get this rocket to track the enemy, we're just gonna to have to do a couple things. The first thing is, on begin play, after we do the parent begin play, we want to set up the functionality to track down an enemy and move after it. And the first thing I want to do is set up a function to find the closest enemy to the player. So let's create a function called find closest enemy. And I'm actually going to show you a design pattern that can be used in a variety of ways. But basically what it will do is it will cycle through all of the enemies in the level and it's going to find the closest one. So the first thing I want to do is get all actors of class. And this is going to be our enemy base. And we'll do a for each loop here so we can cycle through all of the enemies. Now we're going to use a get distance too. And we will use self as the target and other actor will be the enemy. Now we want to check if it's less than a number. And for this, we're gonna create a local variable called closest, and I'll just put an L, that way we remember this is a local variable. We could make it so that it doesn't just endlessly look for enemies through eternity. We can set this to have a maximum range. So on our rocket, let's create a variable that's not local, and we're gonna call this max range. And this will be a float. And just to get started, let's set this as 2000. Now, when we first call this, we can take our max range and set that to the closest value. So it's going to try to find the closest enemy that's within the range of the missile. And let's do a branch here. If this enemy is closer than closest, we want to set closest now to this distance. Let's take our closest and we'll set it to this distance. And we want to do a second thing, which is take this and promote it to a local variable. And this is going to be called closest enemy. And we'll also put the L. So remember this is the local variable. Now what's going to happen is this is going to cycle through all of the enemies that are within this max range that we set to 2000. 
and it's gonna cycle through them. And whenever one is closer than closest, it'll set that one to closest and set it to the closest enemy. So what this means is when this for each loop completes, we will have the closest enemy will actually be the closest enemy to this rocket. So I wanna get this, and I actually wanna set this to a new variable that will not be a local variable, and this is gonna be called enemy target. And we'll set this on completion of the for each loop. Now let's call find closest enemy on begin play, and then if our enemy target is valid, and this is where we're going to learn about some of the functionality of the projectile movement component. And one awesome thing about it is if we scroll down here, we can see is homing projectile. And for our rocket, we can set it to be a homing projectile. And then you'll see that there's a homing acceleration magnitude. And this is how much will it home in on a target? Let's just select a value for now of 1000. And as we continue to develop this, you can tweak this value if you want, but we can take our projectile movement and say set homing target component. And if we get the root of our enemy, we can set that to the homing component of this missile, which means when we spawn one of these rockets, we'll find the closest enemy, and then we'll check that the enemy target is valid. And if it is, we'll set our projectile movement component to just home in on that target. And this will allow us to create a different projectile type, which is a rocket. So now that we have our rocket launcher set up to spawn rockets, and we have our rocket set up to home in on the targets, the last thing we need to do is just change our rocket launcher pickup to spawn the rocket launcher. <laughs> All right, so I had a bit of a setback. My Unreal Engine crashed, uh, which it seems to have been doing lately. Um, but I think I got everything back to where it was before the crash. Um, so I just want to review that we have our rocket launcher. The only thing we did here is change the projectile class to rocket and change the fire rate to one. So it'll fire one rocket every second. And then in our rocket, we have this function, which finds the closest enemy sets that to enemy target. And then if that's valid, we're gonna set the homing target component to home in on that. And to do that, we had to set this as a homing projectile. And the other thing that I had to do is reset up my rocket fuel, uh, Niagara particle system. So that's done. So I think we're back to where we were before the crash. The last thing we need to do is just set up our loot. So here we have our missile launcher, Let's just again change this to missile launcher pickup so that there's no confusion about which one's the loot class and which one's the weapon class. And I'm going to open this up and my mesh I'm going to set as the missile launcher. And again, we need to override the collect loot function and we want to call add weapon to array. And for this, we'll create a variable called weapon class. We want to set this to the rocket launcher, then call spawn weapons. And now if we did everything right, this should be working. So let's just keep playing until we get a missile launcher. There's one. And that didn't quite work. So what do we do wrong? Oh, we need to set this to rocket launcher. And now we can see that we have rocket launchers and they are doing their best to home in on the enemies. And when there is no enemy present, they just keep moving forward and to infinity. So that's working. There is one other strange behavior and that's that the rockets are homing in on the enemies, but they are not really changing their direction. So for this, what we'll actually do is use the tick and we're going to get our enemy target. We're going to check that it is valid. 
just to prevent any bugs. And then we will set world rotation of our root component and then find look at angle or rotation. And then we'll say get actor location and then get actor location of our enemy target. And now when we fire rockets, they should turn to look like they're actually looking at the enemy that they're going after. And we also just verified one other thing, and that is when the ship is destroyed, all of the weapons are reset because we had already set that up previously in a previous lesson. So I know this lesson was a little bit longer. I hope you were able to stick with it and follow along. Again, if there are any issues, uh, please put something in the comments so I can know to how to help you and also how to fix it in a future version of this lesson. With the crash, the lesson got a little bit all over the place. So I hope it wasn't too confusing. In the next lesson, we will continue to develop this game by creating a new enemy type that is an enemy that is gonna drop some bombs. So for that, we'll create our bombs and our bomber enemy type. So thanks for sticking with it through this whole lesson and I will see you in the next lesson.